What is up, everyone? I am going to do a response to uh, Wolfman, 13th Wolfman. He is a horror reviewer that I've been following. He knows his stuff, and he made, recently made a, a top 10 hidden gems in slasher movies. And as you know, slasher movies is my favorite genre. Jason Voorhees, uh, I know I'm wearing Michael Myers, but, you know, they're all cool in my book. Most of them, Freddy, you know, he's awesome. It's hard to pick, uh, but I, I do favor Jason. I just, I'm a, you know, I'm a little biased because, you know, he's a Jersey guy just like me. Uh, even though he moved to L.A. Alright, so num at number 10, my first slasher hidden gem is Slaughter High. I remember seeing this on... Joe Bob Briggs, uh, Monster Vision one night, and I just, I just really, um, it, it's really old school, and all the kills are really creative, like he poisons these people, and he, uh, he electrifies these two, uh, going at, on the bed, in the bed, and it's just like, uh, I just, it's, I just remember seeing it on TV, and like that, uh, for nostalgia reasons, uh, Slaughter High. Is at number ten. Uh, number nine. This is a new one. Uh, came out not too long ago. It's called Christy. It stars Haley Bennett. And I remember in the, uh, seeing the cover and not thinking, well, I don't know. This this uh, this was very generic. This is a very generic cover for a slasher. But it it only it it I would put it. It's a gem because most people when they think new slashers, they think of your next. And this is very much like your next. It's a good slasher. Uh, if you haven't seen it, you know, and one of Haley Bennett's first roles. Uh, at number eight, this is debatable. A lot of people call this one torture porn. It's uh, it's a tie too. It's it's the first and second collector, the collector and the no the collect the collector and the collection. I think they're awesome. I think the kills are are balls to walls crazy. I like the killer's mask. It's a cool horror movie. It's it's it was hot when it first came out, and it it's it's sizzled out since. Uh, at number seven, this is um, it, it's hard calling this one a slasher because it's a a guy with a blow torch and not a knife. It's uh, don't go in the house. Don't go in the house. I'm not sure. It's it's a late seventies, maybe possibly eighty, nineteen eighty. But don't go in the house. I remember renting this at the video store. It was dusty. Like no one's ever seen. Like no one's taken this thing out. I put it in, and uh, I, it just blew me away. I just it was like it was grimy, sleazy, gross, and just really like really smutty. This it's a smutty slasher movie. And. Uh, Number six, this is debatable because it's uh, Dario Argento. It's uh, my favorite. It's Phenomena, or AKA Creepers. Listen, any Gallo movies, you could pretty much call them slashers. I think so. I mean, but the Gallo's more or less have tropes like the gloves, the atmosphere, the um, the mask killer with the hat and, and trench coat. Th those are some tropes that put it in its own genre but phenomena I, I with the Iron Maiden music and, and Jennifer Connelly as the final girl I, I thought it was a you could definitely make a case for calling it a slasher uh, number five this is another uh, controversial number five child's play all right all right hold on okay now the whole when you make a movie into a series People tend to forget about the very first movie. They think about the most recent sequel. I think this, the first Child's Play, is kind of like a forgotten movie. Because we already moved on to The Bride and The Curse. And everyone else watches the, the new ones. And we rarely get mentioned to that origin first movie. It's still good. It still um, has, you know... It's the original, and, and it's it's not it shouldn't be forgotten. Like it's being buried with the sequels. And uh, number four, Alice Sweet Alice, another New Jersey movie. 
Um, a very young Brooke Shields, not just briefly in the movie, but uh, it's about a little girl, and I just, I just think the way it's shot, it, it has this really like, like amateur, like, like feel to it, but it, it's, it's creepy the way because it's a little killer, you know. And all right, now we got to the the top three. All right, at number three. Silent Night, Bloody Night. Now, I'm ashamed to say that I only saw this last Christmas. The Christmas 2016 was the first time I saw Silent Night, Bloody Night. And I'm going to tell you something. I know that's a long time away, but you hear movies hyped and hyped and hyped. And I would, I, I've even seen Christmas Evil and Silent Night, like Deadly Night, totally different movie, before I went and saw the steeple of what you know, I, I actually the steeple of Christmas horror movies is Black Christmas, but I, I would go out on a whim, in my own personal taste, and say this one is the Christmas movie because it bears, it, it's a great slasher movie and it's a great Christmas horror movie all in one. So it, it's it's it really is like one of the best slashers and underrated Christmas horror movies because it gets overlooked by other things. Alright, number two is Pieces. And I saw this. It was uh it, it it's it's Texas Chainsaw Massacre on a college campus. And <laughs> I I just think that's awesome. It's gory. It's sleazy and I just I, I it's you know, you really feel like you're watching this in, like, you know, the, the 80s New York City, like, when they had the run-down movie theaters, and Maniac would be playing. Uh, I didn't, I would put Maniac on here, but that's more of, like, a quote-unquote serial killer movie alongside Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer, and alongside the biographical movies of, you know, like, Ed Gein and, and, um, Dahmer and uh, so pieces number two and number one this was 13th Wolf Man's number 10 I wrote it down to my number one it's the Prower baby I overlooked this movie I first time I saw it I didn't give it a chance but you gotta inspect the Prower you have to look at the scenes it's very much like um a, a, a gala movie where you see the hands and they're killing and 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 but it's like a mixture in its atmospheric the, the scenes it almost feels like a Brian De Palma film and it's it's really good it's underrated it, it definitely check out the, the Prower because it, it it's he, it, he's um a cool uh, the way he looks is cool and the fact that it just stopped at the at, you know, unlike every other slasher movie where they feel like they need to make a sequel, you know, this this movie is is it's set ready to be remade, and I would like to see like how what it, it would look like if they made this The Prowler into a remake with the uh, modern rights and maybe filmed it like It Follows or um, you know in that kind of way, like like that retro new wave type way all right so that's my list and uh let me know what your list is and um like and subscribe thank you